Well, more and more churches are starting to use TikTok as a platform to get the message out there. But let's be honest, using TikTok every day can be very time consuming. In this conversation, we want to give you 11 tips that make it easy to get your TikTok content created. We hope this conversation helps you reach more people and grow. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas Costello. And with me, as always, is my co-host... Ian Hyatt, what's up, Thomas? Not much, man. Excited to talk today about 11 easy TikTok content ideas for churches. I think it should be helpful because more and more churches are asking us and are getting into using TikTok. Uh, And I think this is something that a lot of churches really wrestle with is like, what what kind of, like we, you're supposed to be making content so regularly for these kinds of platforms. So what can we do to like make it easy for us to get some quick wins on TikTok there? So I think it'd be a good uh, conversation. We'll kind of share some of our ideas of things we're seeing churches do. Um, I think... I can go out on a limb here and say that you and I are um, both, we're, while we are TikTok creators, right. we are not avid TikTok users. Is that right? You have an account, right? I have an account, but I have not, you know, dove into that yet. Uh, my 14-year-old daughter does TikTok. Your 14-year-old daughter is on there. Is yeah. your wife on there? My wife, pro- just like me, has an account, but doesn't get on there unless... My uh, yeah. my wife is a heavy user, I would say, at times. Okay. She tells me it's at times. I don't want to... Ah. Um, I don't want to... Like, if that's embarrassing, I don't even know. It's, <laughs> she does use it uh, quite yeah. a bit. And I do see she kind of is randomly at times will be sitting around and she'll be randomly yeah. chuckling, looking at that's her phone. Funny. I can kind of assume that she's on TikTok there. So yeah. Uh, yeah. it kind of came... Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say it came out of nowhere. We've been seeing it for yeah. five years or so now. I've been seeing people using TikTok. I think churches are just starting to come alive to this trend that is TikTok. And I think it yeah. is a really big opportunity for people. Because when I was saying that about you know my wife using TikTok, um, we kind of think of it as, oh, this is a Gen Z platform, right? This is for right, right. young people. And they are still the largest active user base on TikTok mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. Gen Z. Uh, so people like 26 and younger, 2015 right. to 26, kind of that range there. That's who's using it the most. Yeah. Uh, but it is really growing uh, in some other demographics. So yeah. millennials, uh, uh, Gen X, um, even uh, some boomers are starting to use TikTok yeah. just because it's something that is so engaging and it really has kind of an addictive um, feel to it, I think, in a lot of ways that people get oh, on. And yeah. I watch the way people use it is they'll be scrolling and, uh, you know, an hour has passed by and they didn't even realize <laughs> it. They've been scrolling go? through yeah. these kinds of videos, yeah. right? So yeah. now all that being said, I will say <clears> that when we have this conversation here today, I think you can apply almost the exact same rules to two other platforms. That would be Instagram Reels uh, yeah. and to YouTube Shorts. Uh, so yeah. we use those platforms uh, almost identically. Uh, we use them the same, uh, really the same way for each one there. So when we at ReachRite, when we make TikTok videos, uh, we'll also post them onto Instagram Reels, uh, YouTube Shorts. I, I think that this is something that um, it's probably a no-brainer for most churches. If you're making the video yeah. already, you might as yeah. well put it onto multiple channels. Um, right. This is something that we, and I think everybody is trying to actively figure out. It really seems like in a lot of ways there's no rhyme or reason to what's working right. because you're using the same videos and some work well on one platform and it doesn't work on the other. And so there's right. lots of different strategies on this here. But I think the content ideas themselves will translate to these other platforms yeah. here. So um, anyway, yeah, I think it's going to be a good conversation, though, just to kind of give some people uh, some ideas on this kind of stuff. Um, I guess maybe you can give us, there have been some changes to uh, TikTok and some of their length um, uh, length allowances and ri- or, um, different things that they allow for length, I guess, on things there. Uh, right. What can you tell us about that, Ian? Yeah, wasn't it? So well, I know what has just recently changed is you can do a video up to 10 minutes now. It used to be, what was it, one or four? I think we were just talking about that. I can't remember so what I, it used to. So I think to. initially it was like, <clears throat> it's been kind of a progression, right? So I, I right. think of it like Vine. If you remember Vine, those were like uh-huh. six second videos back in the yeah, day, yeah. right? And yeah. Twitter bottom, and then it folded and it just kind of yeah. went, went away. Uh, and then TikTok started out with 15 second videos and uh-huh. then they went to one minute. And that's kind of like still a... Um, 
if not a, a limiter, that's kind of like a an upper end of what most videos should be is one minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so it, it you started can out stretch at, it to it, ten though. Yeah. Yeah, you can go up to ten there. So it, it, it's something that we're going to try. We're going to try some experiments with some of our uh, YouTube videos. This podcast is usually yeah. longer than ten minutes, but right. we do some YouTube <laughs> videos that are six, seven, eight minutes, and so we're going to yep. test some of those on TikTok and see how we do with longer form video on there. So yeah. we'll let you know on some of those results. But yeah, yeah. so you have uh, you know up to ten minutes, but we'd say usually under one minute. That's what these ideas are here today. Mm -hmm. They're going to yeah. be videos that would be under a minute. Uh, and that you could probably knock out something that would be engaging on TikTok yeah. here. So um, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and kick us off. The first yeah, one is off. is doing a behind the scenes uh, TikTok videos. I think this is something that is really interesting to people is seeing yeah. what is going on it, when everybody is not on kind of their, their best behavior or when they're practicing uh -huh. or when we're getting ready for something. Uh, I think this can be really a solid uh, piece of content because it, while it may not be polished, and that's one of the great things about TikTok is it doesn't have to be polished. It is something that is inherently authentic when you're showing something that's behind the scenes. So yeah. I think a great chance for this is your worship team practice, yeah. uh, getting yeah. some video of that or even getting video when they mess up or have to stop a song right. and just Bloopers. kind of showing that giving <laughs> yeah blooper reels, some of those yeah. kinds of things, but just giving kind of like a, some of that kind of footage of what it's, what's actually happening there, or yeah. maybe uh, the pastor giving a tour of his office or how he preps for sermons or yeah. some of that kind of content, I think just really can be engaging to people. Yeah. And you said it, I think it really comes off as authentic too. And I mean, you know, I think when you know, especially thinking of the unchurched or maybe someone who's coming back to church for the, the, the first time, you know, in their minds and a lot of folks' minds, I think they're thinking, oh, you know, um, church is the, you know, we come in and if, if we have kids, we get our kids checked into children's church or uh, if you don't have that, they're coming with us in into the to the worship experience. And then you have the preaching and then that's it. But there's yep. a lot that goes on in a given week for churches yeah. planning and prepping and there's meetings and like you said, worship practices. And um, I know that uh, my pastor, he preaches to the staff uh, before he gives the message just so that they can critique him. And and uh, and we've seen some of that video, there's bloopers and him stuttering and stuff like that. So that, uh, you know, has, is pretty humorous. And it, like you said, it just, it, it takes people behind the scenes, makes you personal to, to people, not just a, f a face or a voice on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. So good stuff. I like it. The second one is interviews and testimonies. Again, yeah. it's kind of neat, you know, when we consult churches on um, having testimonials on their website or and using them on social media, which is what we're talking about here with TikTok. But we always recommend keeping those short, right? We know it's, it's easy for an interview and especially maybe a testimony of of someone who's uh, had a, an amazing experience with God or something, it's easy to get long-winded with those. Well, based on what we just shared at the beginning of this, TikTok will make sure you keep it short. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think it <laughs> could be engaging that way too. And again, it's we know already that um, interviews, testimonials, those are very powerful too. And especially when it's not always a video or someone seeing the pastor, but someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of times churches struggle with how do we honor people that went to service projects or missions trips or even like youth camp. And we yeah. want them to be able to tell their stories about what God was doing because that's powerful stuff. But yeah. I, how many times have we been maybe in a church service or maybe smaller churches, you can relate to this, where half the service is uh, people talking about their uh, their camp uh, experience and what happened there mm -hmm. and how great it was. I think yeah. TikTok is a great platform for getting that kind of content out there, especially because it like really emphasizes the short form, really getting the highlight reel yeah. of telling those kinds of stories there. So I think that's a that's a really good one. Good, good. Yeah, you got the next one. Awesome. Next one is pastor insights or sermon snippets. Uh, so I think this is something that's a real easy one that churches, you're already filming this in most cases. Yeah. Uh, you're already doing your entire sermon. You're filming the whole thing. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from taking the best points uh, and clipping them down or maybe recutting them uh, and turning them into one point uh, that's under a minute and really telling the story that way. So case in point here for this podcast, we do exactly that. We record this whole podcast 
podcast episode. It's usually 20, 25 minutes long or so, but we usually turn it in every week into three different TikToks. So yeah. maybe this point will turn into a TikTok video that we wind right. up doing there, but <laughs> there'll be uh, different... Uh, There'll be different, there's different ways you can do this, but I think yeah. it's really an easy way to use content and repurposing things that you're already doing. So snipping that sermon and turning it into something, you don't want it to be only that. I think your TikTok yeah. channel, if it's only sermon snippets, right. uh, it can get kind of repetitive and boring that way for people. Right. Right. But I think if you maybe do one or two of those a week, I think it kind of keeps the main thing the main thing. It's really good at storytelling that way. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Nothing much to add on that one. But the next one I'm excited about here to go over is prayer. Um, first thing that came to mind uh, when I saw this is this is another way to help. I mean, how many Christians have a problem cultivating a prayer life, you know, and, and praying? And I think this gives you the opportunity. And and, and again, you know, it's uh, even scripture teaches that it's not about a long winded spiritual prayer. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus gave that example. Um, and so, uh, you know, this will get be short, but you get to um, and, and I guess what I'm thinking of first is modeling prayer. Uh, you can mm. you can even model prayer. But this can also be, you know, praying for specific needs in the church, a post about that, you know, where yeah. uh, you can lift up Judy who got a bad diagnosis and let's all pray for her, uh, you know, and uh, as a church, let's pray for her. And so there's a lot of cool stuff you can, creative stuff you can do uh, based around prayer. Yeah. I've actually found that some of the most successful channels on TikTok or ministry related channels are pastors that pray daily, a, a one minute prayer yeah. that they do daily. Uh, that they put out there. And it's usually something to be kind of a prayer and an encouragement for people that are watching that. Uh, yeah. And you know, it, it feels a little bit, maybe if, if people are like me, it feels a little bit weird, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm praying to a camera uh, right. and I'm not praying to a camera, but I'm looking into a camera right. and addressing my prayer to the Lord through a camera. It, yeah. it might seem kind of awkward, but I think that there is a real impact that this can have. And I, you know, I'm not saying that you don't at you, you do a feigned prayer or it's some kind of yeah. a performance, but it is something where you are praying uh, and yeah. you're actually asking the Lord to step into these situations and just kind of broadcasting it, letting people see your prayer life. I think you said it right in modeling yeah. that. I think that's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Awesome. Next one uh, is an ask your audience type of content. So ah. I think this is really cool uh, because here's one thing that we've found in doing all of our TikTok and real videos is that one of the biggest factors in getting more views on your content is engagement. And one of mm. the primary ways that people measure engagement is how long people are watching your videos. But mm. we have seen kind of like a back door to this. Um, TikTok videos aren't as commented on as say like YouTube videos in most cases, but it is something that people do comment. And when you do get comments, we have seen skyrocketing engagement that happens after that. So it shows our videos to more and more people. So anything we can do to, to make comments or have people share it, do those things, that really grows it. So I'm thinking about simple questions, like just asking your audience, hey, uh, you know, what should we, um, what's the best potluck food to bring to a potluck? Yeah. Or something <laughs> simple like that, that maybe people have opinions on it is maybe a little bit church related if you have potlucks yeah. and those kinds of things so yeah. that kind of content it engages people it, ha it encourages them to write something or even better on tiktok what's common is that people will do a video response to something so if ah, you say yeah. hey what's your favorite potluck food and someone's going to come in and say that it's a frito pie all day long yeah. and make yeah. a big case and maybe they'll even make a video of how they make it or there's all kinds yeah. of things that people can run with with those kinds of engaging uh questions like that. So an ask, an ask an audience or uh, kind of asking for feedback on a TikTok video, I think is a really cool method. That is cool. That is cool. So next one too uh, is a how-to, like a how-to video. So, um, and we kind of, uh, we kind of mentioned this when we were talking about prayer, because that's what popped in my mind is maybe this is a good way to model prayer to people who need to grow in that. That is one thing that you can do how to, maybe it's how to evangelize another topic, mm. you know, how to, you know, maybe a quick example of, you know, how you shared your faith with the uh, the the teller at the grocery store uh, or, yeah. the, you know, the bank or whatever. Um, and then um, and then there's other funny things uh, that we saw examples of, like uh, how to read the book of Le Leviticus, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that challenge, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, how to Christian celebrate the holidays, whatever. There's all sorts of things people have questions how to do and 
And not just struggles. Uh, it, it could be something even funny, but how-to yeah. videos are cool. I, yeah. I think I think the how to read your Bible, there's something there. It takes a little bit more yeah. work maybe because you probably need yeah. a few different camera angles and things. Yeah. But I think people would be interested to see their pastor's Bibles and see what they actually oh, look yeah. like. So I That's could imagine cool. like, hey, he, you know, Leviticus. Um, I don't yeah. know that my Levi <laughs> Leviticus is that marked up. Uh, yeah. But like if, I, <laughs> if, if you did have a marked up Leviticus, say, hey, yeah. let me show you something God's showing me in the book of Leviticus, pan to your actual Bible, you see yeah. circles and underlines and highlights and lines going to other parts and helping people kind of see, I mean, it's a little bit behind yeah. the scenes and it's a little bit how to, uh, some yeah. of that kind of content can be really engaging. That's good. That's cool. good. Next one is inspirational content. And this should be obvious. I mean, we want all of our content to be inspirational. Yeah. Uh, but I think what we mean by this is just, it's okay occasionally to have quotes or scriptures or music with a quote or uh, uh, inspirational background with a, a, a scripture on it, that kind of yeah. stuff there. Now, here's, here's, hear me out. This is not good enough to be your entire TikTok channel. If you're yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, pictures yeah. of waterfalls with scriptures on them or videos <laughs> of waterfalls and worship music yeah. in the background, that's not going to cut it, I think. Right. But I think if you have something like this once a week, something that maybe is speaking to people at your church just to be an inspiration to people, that can be really good content. So sparingly, yeah. we think that's a good idea. That's funny. Yeah, I know. I think we saw a lot of churches making that mistake when Facebook came out. It was just a scripture uh, for the day or then an event post. And then the next thing was another scripture with an image for the day and nothing wrong with that again, but you can't just rely upon that content. Yeah. So same thing here for sure. Let, let me pause for a second with that. Cause I think that it's something that is really, really important to, to get this, that stuff that did work, like that stuff yes. did work on Facebook, it did work on Instagram. Yeah. It maybe even might've worked a little bit on TikTok. But that doesn't cut the mustard anymore. Uh, so, no. like, that's something that people uh, are expecting is, more. <laughs> yeah, it's just that 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 kind of content is not engaging enough in most cases yeah. that it's going to be shared. So, um, you know, nothing wrong with it, uh, but just have expectations that you're not going to get uh, hundreds or thousands of views on something like that if it's not something that is more authentic and engaging in that way. Yeah. So, again, I, I think that there's actually entire businesses out there that are built around helping churches with their social media. And and here's the rub, like I'll give a little bit of inside business, talking about some uh, some kind of behind the scenes stuff here. Here's some yeah. things we're wrestling with at Reach Right, is yeah. that we see an enormous need for churches to have help with this kind of content, whether it be Instagram yeah. reels, uh, just general yes. Facebook and Instagram posts, help doing that. There are dozens of companies that offer this kind of help, but the only thing that really that really they offer in most cases is like a big repository of all kinds of pre-done posts right. that are primarily scriptures, inspiring quotes, funny questions right. that you just put on there and there might be video. It's because it, it cannot be that authentic. They don't have video of you right. and what you're going through as the pastor of a church and what applies to your people. And yeah. so this is something that we're really wrestling with is how do we actually offer a service like that? So we're playing with ideas of yeah. how can we help churches actually actually doing this content actually for them. The challenge there is it takes a lot of work and therefore it a costs lot a lot of money That's to do right. that kind of stuff there. So anyway, a little bit of inside baseball on yeah. what's happening here at Reach Right with that stuff. But I yeah. think it's appropriate for what we were just talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. Next one I like too is uh, number eight is uh, sneak peeks. Um, so um, give a sneak peek for an upcoming event uh, or you know maybe it's an announcement for something coming up or an outreach or something like that and doing a video makes it more engaging of course than it just being on a regular calendar or something like that. So um, that would be cool. It's funny it made me think of what uh, my church did something creative as we talk I'm a part of a large church here in the Austin area and uh, we have a great auditorium and production and all of that but we decided to kind of go old school and did a tent revival service here a, a hmm. couple weeks back. Um, so we, you know, did actually kind of show some sneak peeks of them setting up the big old, you know, white tent and baptismals and uh, like an old fashioned pulpit out uh, there and everything, things you would think of. And uh, it really was a cool thing to see on social media. So there's a lot of things you can, yeah, depending on what your church is doing. Doesn't have to be a big thing. Could be something small too. So. 
Well, next up we have uh, funny videos and trends. I think that's something that everybody wants to jump on. This is the one where you have the best shot at a video that maybe hits tens or hundreds of thousands or even millions of views is if yeah. you're doing something that is on trend. And TikTok specifically, but also YouTube and uh, and Instagram Reels, they're all good at this. But uh, getting on trend and doing something that is funny or yeah. kind of something that's kind of a current thing, it really is a way to go viral with that kind of stuff there. So uh, TikTok, if you actually are on there, it gives you a lot of ideas for this. So it'll tell you, hey, this is a, a video template that people are using yeah. a lot where you do a photo every this many seconds and then you uh, you set it to this kind of, th this particular song or yeah. there's a funny audio that's going around and then you kind of act out something that goes along with yeah. out there. So uh, yeah. there's lots of templates that are out there. And if you're using TikTok, I'm sure you'll see them all the time. It's there for creators. So you can kind of see that. Uh, but yeah, using that is the way that if you want to do a viral video, uh, that's the way it goes. So I'll share this too. Here's one thing that we're learning about TikTok is that while viral videos do tend to get uh, those huge numbers, a lot of them do absolutely nothing. And yeah. for smaller channels, the alternative to going with this kind of trend or viral style is doing what we'd call like evergreen search related content. And this is yeah. so foreign to me. I don't, I've never searched for something on TikTok before, but I am told, and I just read this stat today, that Gen Z uses TikTok as their primary search engine. So when they're looking oh, for wow. an answer for something, they're more likely to search on TikTok than they are on Google or or YouTube or any Even other YouTube, channel huh? out there. Wow. Isn't that a trip? And so it, is. It's, it's something that this is just where they're used to. And it's yeah. it's terrifying because there is so much like, I'm not even talking about like scary misinformation, but just wrong yeah. information on there. Right. TikTok is famous for cooking experts that are terrible at cooking and doing <laughs> these kinds of things. So it's, yeah. it's really funny to me that that's where they're going yeah. with that. But, uh, if you want to do that, there's a lot to be said for really SEO optimizing your TikTok posts. Uh, yeah. But this is kind of the opposite. This one we're talking about is going more on trend. That's something that's going to have maybe a one day lifespan uh, versus yeah. something that is more search engine optimized. It might be useful two years down the road because you really optimize it and it's something that's more of an evergreen piece of content there. So a little advice on something we're seeing here. That's good. That's funny. You mentioned bad, uh, bad cooks uh, or cooking techniques out there. There's been a lot of dinners ruined because of TikTok or some. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> next one uh, is create challenges. I think we all remember the uh, the ice bucket challenge, right? That, yeah. that was going long viral before TikTok. And, uh, long before TikTok for sure. And uh, so this is another way to get creative, be personal as a church. You know, show. Humor. I think churches are not often thought of as showing humor or doing funny things in, in the minds of many. So this is a way to break down those walls and uh, come up with some creative challenges and just some things that, uh, yeah, just, just create a buzz and get people more involved at the church too. Yeah. Did you ever do the ice bucket challenge? <laughs> I never did, no. I never did either. I guess we're just not on trend that way. So. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, but I, I, I do like this idea. Of, I laughed at a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I laughed yeah. at a lot of them. So. I, I laughed at the ones where they dropped the heavy ice bucket on their heads, uh, like yeah. on accident before it yeah. dumped out. So yep. it was a lot of uh, ice bucket challenge fails injuries. that were out there. Ice yeah, bucket injuries. Good. Yeah. All right, last one I think is one of the most interesting that I think a lot of churches don't think of this, but it's uh, the idea of partnering up for some of your content. Uh, there's some functions that are newer to TikTok, like they have this function called duets. And this is where you see like a side-by-side -side video or like two people doing oh, maybe yeah. the same thing. Maybe they're singing a song together. That's kind of the idea behind it with that. Uh, but there's nothing stopping you from partnering up with other people. And that really is one of the most successful ways to grow a channel on TikTok yeah. or any one of these platforms is leverage the person in your life that already has a platform on there yeah. and yeah. use them to help you kind of gain <laughs> more attention for your own channel here. So oftentimes there'll be another pastor uh, in your sphere yeah. of influence that maybe you guys can switch up on each other's channels or if they preach for you at your church and you preach at theirs, you can put them on there and then they can share it on their TikTok. So it just a way to do that. But here's yeah. what I found. You probably have young people in your church that have thousands of followers on TikTok. If yeah. you invite them to maybe make a piece of content with you, there's That's a high good. likelihood that they might share it on their channel and introduce all of their friends to what's happening at your church. And so That's this idea, idea, I think there's something to be played with here when it comes to partnering up with other 
influencers, if you will. And I, when we say influencer, a yeah. lot of times we think of like the Kardashians. Like I'm not thinking of, it's, <laughs> yeah, right. you don't need to have 150 million followers for you to be right. an influencer on this. So in smaller areas, in your location, there's influencers could be people like the the head of your local sports league could be an influencer in your area there or pastors of other churches or yeah, uh, yeah. the mayor of your town or these kinds of people. They may only have a couple thousand people following them on TikTok, but they could be influencers in these kinds of cases. So that's yeah. something we would look at. That's good stuff. Awesome. Anything to add as we close up here today? No, I think just do it, you know, as a pastor minister. I, I've, I've, you know, of course I hear, I consult with uh, more people in our company, uh, with more pastors than anyone in our company, I should say. I'm on the grounds and I'm, I keep hearing about TikTok from other yeah. pastors ministries. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get into that, you know. Uh, right. They're always using Facebook, most using Facebook and Instagram now. Um, and a few Twitter, not as much, but, but they're all saying, uh, most are saying, and a lot of people are saying, yeah, we're trying to get into TikTok. So we hope that this helps you kind of ha have some ideas on how to start, where to start. Yeah, so. absolutely. Here's the thing is I think that people think that like a lot of times there's like a, a stigma that when it comes to people that are content creators, right. they say, like, they're like, oh, you know what? Get a real job. You know, that, that's such a job. It's <laughs> oh, like, what what are you doing? You just, yeah, like, yeah. that's what people would think. It's like they just sit around and make content all day. Yeah, they play yeah. on their phone. That's all they do. Like doing this for our company. And, and again, yeah. I have people around me that help. We have video editors yeah. and yeah. we have a content person that's full time doing this at Reach right, right here, helping us with this stuff here. I may be in front of the camera doing some of it sometimes, but there's so many people. But let, let me just say, it's a lot of work. And so I, I want to just recognize that. And I think it's important that our audience, like if, if you're a pastor of a church, knowing that TikTok is something you can or should be doing, yeah. like like just know that it's a lot of work. It's not something yeah. that is is just going to be. It, it it seems like it might be one minute a day to make one of these videos because that's all you yeah. see on the other end. But right. I know that the the person that does our video editing alone for our TikTok videos, he yeah. spends on average about eight hours turning our podcast into a handful of TikTok videos, Yeah, right? So it's, it, it's real work to do it right, to yeah. get all the editing and that kind of stuff. It is a real bona fide job to do yep. that. So yep. I say all that not to scare you. I think you can kind of put your toe in. These yeah. are some examples. We tried to keep it really easy with these. Uh, these right. are things that you probably could take, but don't be don't be naive and think that it's going to be you know a minute here, a minute there. You, right. You're probably going to need to have someone that's willing to put in five, 10 hours a week if you really want to start cre creating consistent videos on this kind of platform here. So all I have to say, count the cost. I think it's going to be worth it to a lot of our audience here. And so hopefully yeah. these ideas have kind of helped you get over the hump and kind of take the leap and get on to TikTok there. So if it has Amen. been helpful to you, it would mean a lot to us if you would rate, review, subscribe, drop us a comment. Again, that is something that is really, uh, it lets the algorithm know that this is engaging content and we'd love yeah. to take a look at it. We promise we'll respond to any con uh, yep. comment that's put on here. So drop us a comment wherever you're watching this and we'll see you next time. See ya.